Let's do a speed run through challenges and applications of large language models. Let's start with unfathomable data sets. The data sets we're using today are enormous. For example, for the Llama 2 model, they used a training data set of 2 trillion tokens. That's several terabytes of information. That's enormous. And when we get to these really large data sets, we don't understand what's going on inside them. Their information often could be repetitive that we're using, redundant information. There's a chance that there's some of the information that's also in our benchmarks that we're using, so some type of leakage that could be happening between the two. There could be personally identifiable information in there. And finally, we don't know the optimal mixture of the different types of data that we're using to train. Because often we're doing things like we're pulling from books, from Wikipedia, from code like GitHub. What's the best mix we should have for different types of large language models we have? Tokenizer reliance. Tokenizers are critical because they help us break down words into smaller units and a numerical representation that we use inside large language models. Now, there's a lot of different tokenizers out there from word piece to unigram to byte level approaches. And some types of tokenizers work better on certain types of problems than others. But this is something that really depends on what we're trying to solve, something you need to think about when you're working with large language models. High pre-training costs. Training a single large language model can take thousands of compute hours and cost millions of dollars to do, and an enormous amount of energy as well. Now, we have some guidelines, things like scaling laws that we've used to figure out how much compute it has. Over time, we've been tweaking those scaling laws, for example, to optimize models for inference. We also have to think about pre-training objectives when we're thinking about pre-training. For example, are we looking to predict the next token? Are we trying to mask some of the tokens? Are we trying to use a fill-in-the-middle approach? Fine-tuning overhead. So fine-tuning is when we adapt a pre-trained model to some other task or domain. Typically, fine-tuning takes an enormous amounts of resources because we need to be able to capture that entire model in memory, be able to change and update its weights, knows the gradients there. Now, one of the things that we've seen is we're starting to see some alternatives like PEFT parameter efficient fine tuning that's allowing us to fine tune using a lot less um, using a lot less compute power by just changing a portion of the weights. High inference latency is another challenge we have when we work with large language models. And this is because of the large memory footprints they take. We, they're not often very parallelized at all. Now, people have been trying to make steady advancements in this. So in, in the area of efficient attention, for example, you have approaches like flash attention. You also have techniques like quantization, which are widely used. All of these things are trying to help us figure out how we can be a better inference out of these models. Limited context length is another challenge we're seeing with large language models, where we want to be able to put in lots and lots of information into, for example, a prompt, but the models are limited on that context length. Now, we have started to make improvements in terms of architecturally being able to get models to handle longer context lengths, but the challenge is, is we still need to train, models need to understand how to handle that large context length. Often what's happening right now is we see a U-shaped performance where when we have something that's a large context length, it does good at the beginning and at the end, not so good at the middle. Some of the things that we've seen that are looking for challenges or looking to advance this are positional embeddings, for example. This is also the home of alternatives to transformers that often might have a larger context length. So prompt brittleness is another challenge we've seen where variations of the prompt syntax, often occurring in ways that are unintuitive to humans, can lead to dramatic output changes. The goal would be to develop LLMs that are much more robust to these prompt styles, and that way practitioners don't have to focus as much on it right now. Right now, you see approaches of breaking down complex prompts into much simpler techniques, lots of different approaches for prompting from things like chain of thought and treat of thought to be able to figure out ways to get this information out of large language models. Hallucinations are a well-known challenge. These models can output inaccurate information, can be hard to detect that. It's also right now hard to measure exactly what hallucinations are. Now, we do use alternative techniques like retrieval augmented generation RAG as ways to kind of deal with hallucinations. Um, misaligned behavior is when these models are generating outputs that aren't well aligned with human values or intentions. This has been a widely recognized problem and there's been a lot of emphasis on this from trying to think about, hey, can we pre-train or bake in the alignment right from training the model? Or can we add it later, for example, with instruction fine-tuning 
and reinforcement learning with human feedback, which has been the prime way that seemed to be the most successful in terms of changing this alignment. All of this has also led to efforts like Red Teaming, where we proactively attack the model and see if we give it new adverse conditions, can it respond in the ways that we want? Is the model truly aligned? Outdated knowledge, we all know these models are being trained with historical data. How can we deal with that? There's some, some activity of like trying to edit the model itself. Most of the time what we're doing is using other methods like information retrieval, passing that information in as a way to deal with this outdated knowledge problem. Brittle evaluations is an annoying problem where even slight variations in how we do the prompting can lead to dramatic changes on the results of an evaluation data set. One of the ways people have kind of addressed this is by not just focusing on one benchmark, one data set, but starting to review models over a large number of data sets. So for example, the Helm is a great example of that. Evaluations based on human written benchmarks are getting very hard as these models get better and better. It's harder to get to find a separation between the models and humans. It's also these da this data is leaking into benchmark data. So another challenge is having evaluations that are based on human written ground truth. What we're finding is these models are getting very good where they're very close to that human level ground truth. It's hard to tell the difference between them. So what we see is we see people now looking at across number of different types of data sets to get at this also starting to look at can we evaluate these models without humans using models itself is another potential avenue another challenge listed is tasks not solvable by scale i haven't really seen a lot of evidence of this but the idea is even if we scale up a large language models there's going to be some types of problems they're not going to be able to be solved lacking experimental designs is a very common problem i see in the literature around large language models where we have lots of new innovations lots of new developments that have had but we haven't been able to really see, is it that new innovation or is it something else? Kind of an ablation approach to do a nice controlled study to see what the effect of something new is. Often what happens is there's so many different parameters, so many knobs and switches on these things that it's really hard to figure out exactly what is the factor that's causing, for example, a lift in performance. And because there's this huge widespread space of different types of changes we can have when we work with large language models. Right? We talked about how expensive it is, hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars to train one of these. We can't run that many experiments with them. So that's left a huge gap in our knowledge because of this lack of experimental design at the scale of large language models. Lack of reproducibility is another challenge that manifests in several different ways. One is on the training side, there's lots of seeds, for example, especially when we're talking about distributed training. It's very hard for two teams to exactly, down to the individual weights of a large language model, be reproducible. This also happens when we're talking about commercial APIs. We have issues with reproducibility where two people can give the exact same prompt under the exact same circumstances, end up with two different results. There you go. I've teased with a little bit of information, the 16 challenges. Go read the paper, get the full in-depth understanding of these challenges.